Hey friends, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to share with you about how you can uh, perform a filtering to your search results uh, where your search results is actually fetched by an API. So I have an example over here and I think this is going to be uh, the first part of two videos. So uh, this video, I'm going to use the MVC architecture to show you how you can structure this. So as you can see over here, uh, we have a list of uh, movies over here and we have a search filter and we uh, currently have 100 results, um, 100 movies inside this list over here, all right? So as you can see on my code, I actually uh, make an API call to OMDB API to fetch these results. And inside this uh, filter results uh, text view, you can actually perform some kind of filter, all right? So maybe I can do like a one. Okay, so over here, I have six results found, one, one, one. Okay, and uh, when I clear the filter results, notice that I get back uh, all the full uh, unfiltered results, uh, which is 100 results. And then maybe let's go with studio. So maybe let me type in studio, S-T-U-D-I-O, and we have nine results found. And notice that when I hit the backspace button, it kind of like, you know, for, uh, it kind of like uh, refilters and uh, uh, re refresh the list based on uh, whatever uh, search query that I have inside the text field, all right? So obviously when I clear uh, everything, I'm going to get the 100 results, okay? So I'm going to walk you through how I built this. I know that this is kind of like a beginner tutorial, but I figured that uh, some uh, uh, more junior developers might need this tutorial, so I decided to make this. And the second part of this video is uh, is going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to rehash this into the MVVM architecture so that this is uh, a bit more, uh, this is both for advanced uh, developers. Uh, if you want to start writing unit tests and making sure that your, your code is testable, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how you can do that in the next video. Okay, so let's get started on this video first. So uh, we have the search controller, which is a UI table view controller. So I'm keeping this example very simple. So I'm using UIKit and a storyboard, so I don't have to code out all the uh, views programmatically and you know clutter the entire uh, file. So I'm just going to use a storyboard. We have a navigation controller pointing to a search uh, table view controller. And we have nothing more uh, other than just a prototype cell, which has an image view and a label. So I, I believe you should know how to do this if you are working on iOS for some time already. Okay, and then uh, we have the search um, uh, title as well. I, I place that inside the storyboard so that we don't clutter, um, we don't clutter it. Okay, where, where is it? Over here. All right. Okay, so let's come to the table view controller. Let's just walk through what we have. Okay, so maybe let's look at the view deload. load. Okay, so uh, also notice that inside um, the, uh, on line 27, I have load view as well. So for some of you who might be curious what load view is, it's also part of the life cycle of the uh, UI table view controller and the load view is caught before view deload load happens. Okay, so I'm just going to put a breakpoint over here and just run this and show it to you that uh, load view is actually being caught first. All right, so what it means is that before view deload load happens, I'm actually calling the observe function and this is over here and what I'm doing over here is that I'm just observing one of this published property called filtered okay I'm gonna walk you through more so notice that when I hit the continue button this this is when view the load uh, happens okay so I kind of like you know prefer to do the observation before view the load happens and the reason is because um, sometimes uh, when you structure this with MVVM architecture, you want to send the view the load um, event to the view model, and you kind of want the observation to you know to be established before that, right? Otherwise, you know, uh, it, you, you might have a problem where uh, the arrangement or, or the sequence of where these functions caught do matter, and you get into unnecessary bugs. So that's the reason why I like to observe it inside the load view uh, function instead. Okay, so over here, what we do doing we are setting up the table view and uh, it's nothing more than just setting a uh, content inset so that uh, the header is uh, slightly closer to the um, to the text view nothing too fancy and then inside I'm calling the fetch products function and what I'm doing is that I'm making an API call so it looks a bit complex over here but it's actually very simple I can assure you that <laughs> so as you can see um, our URL session uh, making um, a call to this URL and what is this URL? It's this one over here. Uh, but notice that we have all this uh, this for loop inside, and the reason is because uh, the OMDB API only returns ten results each time. 
you know there, there isn't an API where it returns to you a list of um, you know of movie genres so I had to uh, use the search function to, uh, to to perform a search for Marvel and what I did over here was just to loop through uh, all the different pages 10 pages and that's the reason why I get a hundred results and um, so you notice over here that the page uh, it's passed as a param over here so basically when the uh, when fetch products is being called I'm calling 10 APIs at the same time and one once all the response is being um, is being collated, I put them inside this uh, temp um, array. Okay, and the, the way to do that is using a dis dispatch group. So if you do not know how a uh, dispatch group works, I think you can just uh, do a search. Basically, what it does is that it allows you to uh, call uh, multiple asynchronous functions together, and upon a callback, uh, then we. Uh, uh, Collect, collect all the results together and we uh, perform a task okay so as you can see uh, we create this dispatch group and then we enter uh, uh, when we enter into the loop and then uh, we call the leave method when uh, we receive the uh, the response okay this means when the API call uh, is successful alright so obviously this is not the best way because you know in the event if uh, one of the API call has an error then obviously we get into problems but just to keep things simple I'm, I'm doing it this way okay and then finally group group.notify uh, happens when uh, all the uh, 10 API calls are being uh, caught successfully then what I do is that I I, um, I set the movies uh, property so as you can see all the way at the top over here I have the movies uh, which is an array of movies so let's maybe also look at what this um, model looks like so keeping it really simple we have a movies response and this returns to us a list of movie and uh, it's just, just inside the result um, um, uh, property over here that contains this array of movie okay very straightforward stuff okay and inside this uh, uh, below this movies property we have another one called filtered all right because we are doing some few of uh, a filtration so again it has the same, uh, same signature it's also an array of movie but notice this time that this is a published okay which means that this is a publisher and the reason why I made this a uh, published uh, property is because uh, every time filtered is being uh, uh, being updated we want to uh, reload the the table view okay so let's come back to this part over here so uh, once I get all the API calls successfully I set uh, I set the movies to temp and what is temp? Temp is basically this container, this temporary container to contain all the results and then I set that uh, into the filtered uh, property as well because when you load, uh, the, uh, view the load happens for the first time, you want to display all the results. You, you don't want to have any uh, filtered results, okay? So filtered will contain uh, all the movies. Okay, in fact, uh, to make this even simpler, maybe I can just do like that. Self uh, dot filtered equals self dot movies and then finally, uh, I will load the table view. In fact, I think I don't have to do that because I have already done the observation over here. So every time filtered is being changed, it's being modified, the table view will be reloaded. Okay, so I think this should be fine. Let me just rerun the app one more time and I believe that um, all the results, the 100 results will be shown. Okay, yep, 100 results shown, great. Okay, so now let's uh, let's move on to the next uh, thing, set up navigation. This uh, should be fairly simple as well. Uh, what we do is that we set the um, the search controller as uh, the search uh, as the navigation item uh, dot search controller property. So basically, this line will put the navigation uh, the search controller, or rather the search text field inside this uh, navigation uh, area. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Okay, I've I've explained about observe already. So now let's come to uh, this part over here. So these are the UI table. Uh, view uh, uh, data source and delegate methods so uh, should be pretty straightforward so inside the number of rows and section I'm always returning the filtered um, the filtered um, property count okay because we are, we are not interested in this Mo you can think of this as uh, this movies should contain uh, whatever the API is being written and filtered is more like a local state okay of, of uh, the results uh, that should be shown after you perform the filter okay so what else do we have? Uh, we have self or role. This should be pretty self-explanatory as well. And then we get the movie from the filtered uh, property. Okay. And then uh, obviously this has to match with this. You know, if this is movies.count and, and this is filtered, I think you're going to get a crash. So you've got to ensure that these are the same. And then inside the configure method, basically I'm just passing the model into the cell. Okay. For it to uh, set on the image view as well as the label. Okay, so what else do we have? High for row, this is arbitrary, 144, because it looks nice. 
and then finally i added this a uh, title for hidden section which is this one over here so uh, this gives you a, a, a better illustration whenever you perform a filter and you see uh, what are the results that are being found okay so over here i use a string format i pass in the filter.count and then uh, basically it will tell you like you know five results found or, or, or 20 results found okay all right let's move on to this part over here so uh, uh, inside this is an extension that conforms to ui search results updating and uh, you have this uh, and the reason is because inside the search controller block i have this thing over here so basically you're setting the um the, the updater to the self which is the search controller and therefore there's a need to conform to this uh, protocol all right so what this does is that every time you type in it's going to uh it's going to uh, let you know what um the this uh the the query is so maybe let me just print this out so query like that okay and then i'm just going to run this and then you can kind of see uh, what's happening whenever i type in something so maybe let me just at this uh, anchor brackets over here hello all right so as you can see as i type in this is uh this is being modified okay so let's let's try to understand what's happening over here so got let query equals to search controller dot search bar dot text and the reason is because uh this returns to us a string optional all right string optional and we just want to ensure that this is uh uh, a non-optional and we perform a check to ensure that this is uh, not empty because obviously if this is empty then um, uh, I, I think uh, the filtration is not going to work correctly okay so what so we have this condition over here to say that hey if this is empty okay empty basically means we have nothing inside over here then the filtered property should should uh, should contain all the movies right because since we have no fil you have no filter then you want to return everything okay so if you don't add this thing inside over here it's not going to uh, work very well so for example if i do like one and then if i hit backspace backspace and i hit the backspace one more time i get the 100 results file and this is possible because of this line over here okay i i hope that this is easy to understand okay so the last part over here self dot filtered okay uh, what we do is that we look at the movies um, uh, uh, array we perform a filter and then we want to filter according to the title and i think one thing to note is that uh, you uh, if you're doing this for the first time you have to add in this lowercase because if you don't then um, it might not work very well so for example if i remove this thing over here and um, i remove this over here let me just run this uh, you see that uh, you get into problems actually so because now this is case sensitive so for example if i want to type in like captain uh, you notice that there might be a problem would that be a problem no oh it looks okay uh, oh that's because this is already a capital uh, c so maybe let's uh, let me see if i can make this a non-capital c so c a p all right so guys uh notice that we have a problem over here all right because now this becomes case sensitive which is kind of silly we don't want that okay so i'm just going to uh, restore that okay i think uh, that's pretty much uh, for this very simple uh, tutorial uh, i'm gonna maybe post this on github so you can reference this and then the next video i'm going to transform this into the mvvm architecture and i'll be using like a bunch of publishers and whatnot it's going to be a, a little bit more complex but uh, it's going to make your code a lot more testable all right once again thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one cheers guys bye